hello and welcome to the last video on the November 2018 Power BI Desktop update. This video is about the new modeling pane. Absolutely fantastic. And I'm going to take the opportunity to actually address the statement that I made on the DAX horror video where I said that you shouldn't put all measures on one table. So I'm going to tell you my reasons as to why I don't think it's a good idea. And also, due to this modeling pain, I'm going to give you an option on how you can do that better. So, all of that in just a second. So, hello there. Do you know that I publish Power BI videos every Monday, Wednesday and Fridays? So, make sure you hit the subscriber button and the bell to receive notifications every time I do that. How about we get started with today's video? So here we are in Power BI. This is the report I use for YouTube to see how I am doing on YouTube. It is not updated, as you can see. I haven't still fixed the API issues that, you know, they, they change. You don't bother about that. We're going to talk about the modeling pane. Um, um, the first thing you need to do, you have to go to options and you have to click the preview thing because this is still on preview. So you have to go here to modeling view and tick that, okay? Once you've done that, you have to restart Power BI and then you will see this relationships tab with a star on it. And the star is basically the, the new modeling view. And it is very, very, very good. Uh, first of all, if we go in there, the first thing is that it can handle more tables than ever. If you'd have, if you were working with big models, you'll see that it was slow and non-responsive. Well, they've changed that, so it is a lot more responsive now. And uh, it allows you to create different views of the model. Now, I, I don't know if a warning or a note of advice. Do not import old tables just because you can hide them now. It is not a good idea. If you are not using a table, don't import it. Even if you can hide it here, it will affect your performance. So import only the tables that you need. But if you need them and you still end up with a big model, then you have the possibility to actually split the elephant into pieces, if that makes sense. So you can actually see parts of your model in different views. And I, I've worked with big models and it is very, very useful because, you know, you have to scroll up and find that table and then you have to scroll down and find the other table and then you have to see what is in between. Now you can just pick those tables and there are a few ways that you can do it. Let me show you. So this is the model that we have. You have two ways. It says here, uh, you add a new tab on the modeling view, and then this says, set up your uh, layout. It says, drag tables here. Stupid me. I went in here, I grab a table and I tried to put it in there, but that's not what they mean. What they mean is that you grab them for, from here. So I grab that one, I grab that one, and milestones, for example. And they, these, they don't have any relationship between them, so I don't have to do anything. Another way you can do is you can grab the entire model again, and then you can like hide the ones that you don't want to use. So once I have everything in here, I can go in there, for example, in there, and then I do not delete from model if you are going to use them, and do not hide in report view. Hiding report view, it means that the users won't be able to see it. Maybe you want to do that, fine, do it. But if you want to hide from diagram, you have to do here remove from diagram, okay? And then it's still in the model, but it's not in this diagram view. So that's the way you do it. You can, I guess you can click all of them, yeah, and then remove from diagram. So you select click and then you have everything in there. And now you have a better view of your model, which is great actually. This, for example, those tables were just for calculations I made to see growth and nobody is going to use it for other than, you know, see it on the report. You are not going to drag and drop them anywhere else. So they are not useful in my diagram view when I'm creating other things. So this is, for example, a view that I would like to have on this report. Um, so that is great. What else you can do? You can click on a table and then you can add uh, some description about the table, which I think is really good. Um, as, long, as well as the storage mode. Again, if you don't know anything about storage modes, I have a video on that. 
once you have imported something, you cannot change it. But if you have something in the red query, you can put it into dual or import mode. And that's what you are able to do here. Otherwise, you are locked. You cannot do anything. But uh, here you have that option, okay? Which I think is easier than just do it here on the uh, report view. It's not that easy to actually... Uh, yeah, th th this is a better better way to do it. Um, what else? You can uh, import one table. Let me show you. And then you can right click and say add related tables. And that will add the related tables for that specific table. So you don't have to drag them out. It will drag them for you. It will drag, I guess, the, the first hierarchy of tables. This is what I find when I did that. You see? Oh, it's working now. It wasn't working before. These arrows were not following. Maybe it was because there was no place. Oh, but now it's working. Excellent. As you can see, you see now that here are the tables and... But it is a preview, so they'll fix that very, very soon. Oh, now it is really the issue I was having before. Oh, so if you put it too close. Okay, gotcha. So you have to put it way out? No, not either. Okay. Fine. So that, that's probably, there you go. Now we can see the table better. I like to put my tables on a star so I can see, you know, the flows of relationships. Other people prefer to put it on top and then the fact tables on the bottom. It's just a preference, nothing else. I like to put them on star, anyhow. Uh, then I can see how everything is moving towards the center. So if we grab now some uh, fields or columns, we see now that the modeling view, you remember this modeling view that is only available in the report view, is not available here, which I always thought it was a pity. You see? Now it is available on the new pane, and I think that is really good because it is quite annoying to have to go to the report view all the time and try to, to fix that. So now you have everything in here. You have uh, the name of the uh, field. You can write a description. You can write a folder. We're going to talk about that in a second. You can say if that thing is hidden or not. And then you can multiple select and then make things hidden, for example, which is very useful. You can add the <coughs> formatting type if you want to have a number. Formatting do it in Power Query. Don't do it here. With that said, if you have to, have to, you have the possibility to do it here, but otherwise do it uh, in Power Query. Except for, you know, this percent and thousand separators. How the separator should always be on? I don't know why it's not. Decimal places, and then you have sort by column, data category, summarize, and it's notable. One of the things I miss from this is actually the possibility to move um, columns measures i don't think it's possible you see to, to move the measure from this table to another i still have to go to the report view pick the measure and then here so these properties i would love to have on the model view if somebody from microsoft is listening i would love to have that on the modeling view too now uh, as you can see here, we're going to talk about the folders, but before that, as you can see here, I have two of these measure tables that I told you not to do. And um, almost always I said, and this is the only case where I do this table, the measures, and it is when I am doing a lot of measures. For example, this is um, year over year, month over month, grow on, on likes, shares, comments, and subs. And this is a, a fast report that I have that I created, and those measures I'm not going to use anywhere else but there. And for that reason, and because there are so many, I don't want to have them in here, or I didn't want to have them in, in there. So I created one of these tables, but otherwise, 
from a user perspective, I don't think it's a good idea. I think that for a developer, it definitely is because, you know, when you create, if you click here, create measure, it always creates higher, you know, the highest table up. So up here. So if you have, of course, a measure table, it will put everything there and you can work very, very fast. And you probably can do that while you are creating the model. But I would really recommend you that you spread the measures where they belong because they are easier to find and it's more intuitive. So if I want to find the number of videos that I have, I would naturally go to the videos table instead of going to, you know, here that there is like a thousand measures. It would be too overwhelming. It's better to split the cake. So from a user perspective, I would definitely say that put it where they belong. So in an intuitive manner, you can find your measures. But not only that, if, I mean, if you have, for example, in this growth table, where I have all this, you know, for the growth dashboard to see how much I'm growing month by month on, you know, likes, engagement and all that stuff. If I have to troubleshoot something, I have to know what this measure is pulling from, right? Because I want to see how the uh, relationships are flowing. That's one of the big issues that you have with DAX. And you cannot see that because it is on a table somewhere else. So if I have a mental map that my, I always have a mental map of my model. So I know that, you know, customers is here and then I have my sales here and then I have my products here. So things flow like that. And then if I have my measure of sales by product or by customer in here, I just know, I can see how things are flowing. And if you put that in another table, you just, for me, it's very difficult to visualize how it flows, how, how you know, filters flow, because I don't know where this measure is pulling from. You know, you can see DAX measures have, you know, small robots that pull columns and rows from different places. And if you put it in the middle, you can see how relationships work. If you put everything on one table, you have no idea. And you have to go there and look, and then you have to go into the relationship view, and you have to see how those things work. And if, for example, when I get DAX support cases and I get these type of measures, it is a nightmare because, I mean, the guy that created that maybe knows something about the model, probably a lot. But as a new person looking at it, I just have to go through the entire model to see where this measure that I travels from is pulling stuff, how relationships look, and it makes the work harder. So with that said, good news is with this new modeling view. Check this out. I have, for example, here uh, the milestones measures table that is going to use just for that specific report. In this case, it was for this one. So these milestones are these milestones, okay? So I'm not going to use them anywhere, but just there. And now what I can do is I actually have a milestone table uh, where I was, you know, counting my 10,000 subscribers and doing some forecasting and, you know, machine learning and all that stuff. So here, it would actually be a better place to put that thing. You would go to, you know, it would be really cool, by the way, if we, if I click on a table that it will highlight here where that table is, because now that I have a thousand views, where do I find it? Okay, so let's go in here. This is my subs uh, milestone table, which is not there either. There it is, sub milestones table. And uh, one of the things you can do, if you click on any of the columns, you see here display folder. Now, when I read that it was a display folder available, I actually tried to right click. I said, oh, I can go site, oh, of course, here and right click and create folder. Or I can go on the, you know, like hierarchies, you go there and then you right click and create a folder. Nope. I actually had to, to watch Amanda's video to actually see how this is done. I, I think you should definitely high click 
and be able to create a folder. And delete a folder is even worse. So let's get to this milestone. And I am going to here, to create a folder, you create a column that you want it to belong to a folder, and then you write the name of the folder. So this is subs milestones measures. And then it creates it and it puts it underneath. And then you can pick all of these measures and put them in display folder if you want to. Okay. So definitely move in my milestones here to that milestone folder because now suddenly I can just collapse it and it's just not that intrusive, but I still know where it's pulling from. So for my mental model is much easier. Um, what I would like to do now is to be able to grab this stuff and then move it to my sub milestone table, but I'm not able to do it from here. As I told you, I have to go to the report tab and then move them there. So I will do that after the video. So I clean this model up a little bit. Um, to delete a folder. Nuts, nuts, nuts. What is it? Where did my folder go? I did create a folder, didn't I? It disappeared. Okay. My stones measures. Now it is there again. So to be able to delete a folder, you have to delete, you know, you have to go through all the columns that access that folder and delete them. And then when you go there, you see the folder disappears. So that's the only way to delete. And the only way to add is to add from a column. So you select a column and then you write the name of the folder and it will be created. And then you select all the columns that are under that folder and you remove the folder you, and to that, for that you remove the name. It's not very intuitive at all, but it is a step forward. You know, this is a preview feature. So good. I'm fine. I'm good with that. And uh, do I have anything else of properties or properties? No. No, I, I, I really like the feature. I think it's great. If you have any feedback on things that you know, do not work well or things that you would like to have add, tell Microsoft on the ideaspowerbi.com or just let me know in the comment box and I can pass them along. Um, yeah. So what was your favorite feature for the Power BI November update? For me, it's got to be this model view, actually. After working with it, it's going to be great. I really want to be able to change where a measure sits, but otherwise I think it's great. So no more power week. This is it. This is the last video. I hope you have a great week and I'll see you again on Wednesday. I've been telling you that I might have an update. I have to figure a few things out before I do a, you know, a new release of something cool. So we will see, maybe it comes on Wednesday or maybe not. Uh, I'll do my best to, to have the announcement ready by Wednesday. With that said, have a great week and I'll see you again very, very soon. Bye.